Indie games have become increasingly common today, with games like Hades 2 eagerly anticipated by hundreds of thousands of fans, people tend to forget what an indie game truly is. A game made by just a few individuals, often in a back room of their home. Enter Fishbowl, a game that isn't just indie, but very indie, being made by just two people. Developed and published by I Miss My Friends Studios, if you were to check their Steam page, you'll see that this studio consists of just two people who are passionate about bringing this game to life. Before we get into the game, let me introduce myself. I am Beatrice, the cybernetic owner of this channel. In this video, we'll take a look at Fishbowl. If you've seen some of the older videos on this channel, you'll know that indie games are something I adore, especially when the passion for a project is so evident that it can even surpass the graphics, or in some cases, the gameplay of a specific game. So what exactly is Fishbowl? Well. According to the developers themselves, and I quote, Fishbowl is a slice of life, coming of age story told over a month, video call, loved ones, work from home, sort through puzzles to rediscover childhood memories, do care tasks, and get to know yourself better one day at a time. Sounds quite interesting, don't you think? Or maybe it doesn't. But to find out my opinion about the game, stick with me until the end of the video where we'll answer together if the game is worth playing or not. I have to mention that I'm playing the demo version of Fishbowl because the game doesn't have an official release date yet. The demo offers us enough of an experience to help us decide whether the game is worth playing or not. So buckle up and let's get into it. This is the menu for Fishbowl. Nothing special, but it does inform us that we'll only be playing the prologue in this demo, which is still a work in progress. This means it will likely change when the final product is released, but that shouldn't discourage us from trying it out. What's missing, and you've probably noticed this too, are the settings, which, although not in the main menu, will be available once we start the game. Additionally, I should mention that this game, being a story-heavy indie game, made it very challenging to record and edit without including spoilers. So, beware, this video will contain some spoilers for the main game. After selecting the New Game option, we are greeted by a message warning us about the type of story this game will contain. Being a slice-of-life indie game, it's expected that it might have a sad ending, depending on the choices we make during gameplay. Yes, this game features multiple choices at key points that will dictate how the story unfolds, but more on that once we dive into the actual gameplay. The game begins with us, the main protagonist named Allo, being in a car and receiving a call from our mother. We get a prompt to answer the phone, and that's exactly what we'll do. What I like here is that we can see the characters while talking to them, which provides a significant background for this type of game. This is also where we can start changing the course of the story by choosing different dialogue options. I'm not sure how crucial this initial dialogue is, but the fact that it gives us the freedom to choose what we say is something I absolutely love when it comes to video games. Eventually, we'll arrive home where we'll have the freedom to explore and interact with almost everything in the house. Sadly, in this demo, we only have access to Aloe's house, but who knows how it will be once the game officially launches. I, for one, am very confident that we'll have many more areas to explore, possibly even meeting with friends, but you know, this is just a speculation, so don't take my word for it. Soon after, we'll discover that the game's settings happen to be in our journal. As you can see, there aren't too many settings. Specifically, we only have sound and screen shake settings. I left everything as default from the beginning because I didn't feel the need to change anything. The game is so cozy that even with the volume turned up to the max, it's still just as enjoyable to play. After exploring the house for a while and washing our hands, I decided to continue with the main objective of the game. Yes, that package by the door. Apparently, it's a package sent by Aloe's mother for our protagonist, containing many items that Aloe's grandmother, Jaja, left for her. Once I interacted with the package, we encountered the first puzzle. We'll have to clear everything aside to see what's at the bottom of the box, namely that fish toy you can barely see in the background. After solving this very complicated puzzle, we'll be able to see a list explaining what each item in that box means. What actually interests us is that toy fish, which we'll have to place on the coffee table in the middle of the living room. Immediately after, we'll go where the game tells us to go, namely to start working from home. 
Now, after we've turned on the PC, we'll encounter another interface, or rather, another puzzle. To begin this puzzle, we'll need to click around until we open the vlog, where we'll meet another character in this game. She'll explain what we need to do to solve this puzzle. If you think about it for a moment, it's not very difficult, especially if you've played Tetris at least once in your life. You just need to match the colors and you'll do just fine. What's important here is that depending on how well you do in this puzzle, the story might have a different ending. I'll skip ahead a bit in the puzzle to show you what happens when you do everything perfectly. After doing that, as you can see, the supporting character is cheering for us, saying that we were on fire. Now, what would happen if we were to do everything wrong? To see what happens, I started over from my last save and intentionally did everything wrong. If you pay attention, you can see that the dialogue changes. The pink-haired girl is a bit disappointed that she will have to miss her show or whatever she wants to watch because she has to work overtime to correct our mistakes. Now, I don't know what impact this has in the long run because, again, this is just a demo, but I am so curious how decisions like this can affect the ending of the game. Now that we are done working, we can explore the house some more in case we missed something, but soon after, our phone will ring and another character, Zoo, will want to talk with us. Once again, we have different dialogue options to choose from, so nothing out of the ordinary so far. Soon after, we'll go to bed and start dreaming. The dream seems more like a reliving of a past memory. And again, depending on the choice you make during the dream, it will have a different outcome. If we choose the face it option, our screen begins to crack right in front of us, indicating that we've ended up in a nightmare. This is where I encountered a bug because eventually we'll reach a fishbowl with a fish in it. And after talking to it, I couldn't move my character at all. This was disappointing because I really wanted to see what happened next, but I was forced to close my game and restart from my last save point. This time I chose the other option, run away, and the dream completely changed. Instead of us sitting at our school bench, we are now at home and everything seems to be thrown around Eventually, we'll reach the same fishbowl, but this time, we are able to interact with it without the game freezing. Soon after, we'll wake up, and with the light we found in our dream, we'll check on our toy fish, which apparently begins to talk to us. If we select the correct answer, it will make us relive a happy memory. After some more dialogue and choices, we'll be prompted that we've finished the demo, and we are also being thanked for playing it. Honestly, I think it was a great demo, of course, it's not as deep as the full game because we only played the prologue and had to make a few decisions whose impact we won't see until the full game comes out. And we also encountered a bug, but still, I had a great experience with it. I've always been mesmerized by indie games that can capture my attention so well. Now, here comes the big question. Is Fishbowl worth playing or at least worth trying? In my opinion, yes. Despite it being yet another indie game lost in the crowd of the new wave of indie games that keep coming out over the years, I believe Fishbowl offers the player a unique experience, not just because of the dialogue choices and the butterfly effect story it has, but also because of the setting. If you haven't noticed by now, the game is set in India, with all the characters we've met so far being Indian. I believe it's always nice to see different cultures and how they handle things, no matter which type of media we consume to do that. So go ahead, give Fishbowl a try. If you love deep, touching stories, I'm sure you'll enjoy Fishbowl as well. And that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please don't hesitate to like the video and maybe even consider subscribing. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.